see if Tessa would be able to today in this series of uh, events in Sweden dedicated to the restoration of the Baltic independence. My topic today is Baltic-Russian relations during the first years after the restoration of independence. When I actually was asked to speak on this topic, I must say that at the beginning uh, I was not too happy <laughs> because I just really wanted to talk about this, what Carl talked about, what we have done during 20 years, how successful we are and how well everything goes. <laughs> no, but then actually, especially after the terrorist attack against the Estonian Minister of Defense, after new and new accusations from Russian Foreign Ministry, I suddenly found that it is actually not only interesting but also important and necessary topic. Because to understand where we are, it's uh, highly necessary to look uh, how it all started. And that I am trying to do. As Carl Pilsson mentioned before, in the normal, uh, in the meet in Monday meetings in Sweden, where Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Moldovans, others participated, we always enjoyed the participation of the Russian Democrats. Because they were really with us on the barricades during these days, and they were really supporting and fighting for our freedom in this time. Polis Yeltsin placed personally very important a large role to take several conflicts, dangers down during this time. He recognized Estonian independence and, uh, and it, uh, it was really enormous help what we got. And during the first year, we can say, after the restoration of independence, it, uh, from the 1991 to the middle of 1992, we can say that it was hard in this time in the world to find the countries with whom the politics operated more as Russia. There was really excellent active cooperation. Lithuania achieved the treaty, past treaty on the Russian troops withdrawal without any conditions in their most perfect way, technical <coughs> agreement, actually which was realized very well without any, any huge problems. Uh, the free trade treaties was signed or signed with all three Baltic countries. There was a large understanding, no conflict uh, and very close cooperation. And then suddenly it all changed. And I just looked uh, on the documents and remember also and but the uh, newspaper news and the other documents are very useful in this sense. It happened somewhere in 1992, August, September, mostly in this month. Suddenly, uh, this friendship was not so much there anymore. Uh, Russia stopped in Latvia and Estonia the withdrawal of their troops. Uh, declaring that as these countries are in most terrible way discriminating the not local population, it, it will be possible to withdraw the troops from their countries. Uh, the, the treaty with Estonia was annulled or stopped, which means economical ties were, were going under strong stress. Uh, Estonia and Latvia were called to be the fascists countries were supported and are now are supported Nazis. And all this, we can say, uh, similar statements or similar positions, what we have are hearing even today, all, them, all of them jumped out suddenly. Nothing so much before, but then they arrived. I just looked on both Latvia and Estonia, Lithuania, has something changed? Has the bad body countries done any new decisions, passed the laws, taken something, uh, 
some uh, statements or so. No, nothing. In Estonia, in the back there, it really, there was no violence. There was no verbal attacks. There were new, not new laws. Uh, nothing has happened. What has happened was the attitude of of uh, of the neighbor. Because even probably we have wanted to do something, in this moment all three Baltic countries were in such a situation that our, uh, our only objective then was to survive. In Estonia, in 1992, we had 1,000% inflation. We had economical dependence from Russia was nearly absolute. It was 92.5 of all our trade was connected with Russia. We were totally dependent on the field of energy. Within our state was in the chaos. We didn't have the normal police force, but very high criminality. Our economy went down very fast. Unemployment has jumped up. We had both right and left wing extremists, and it was uh, very hard to sometimes to say, can we really get out from this situation? There was at least not too much hope when at the beginning of the year Estonia introduced the uh, Pong or Talon system and there was a serious plan and there was no gasoline available uh, to evacuate most of the capital to the countryside. So the situation was really, really extremely serious. But we were very decisive. We have decided, yes, we will be independent nations, and it means we will get out of it. Which means, in all three Baltic countries, maybe a little bit different time, but a similar reform, a similar directions are launched, starting from the real and serious privatization, fight against the corruption and criminality, and most important, reform put in fact in this time, a monetary reform done first in Latvia and Estonia in the summer of 1992, cutting the ties with the Russian ruble system, and a little bit later in the same form also in Lithuania. This was the reform which changed not only the course of the economy, but uh, it changed also very much the attitude of people who really understood that uh, it was now real independence for them. To be very frank, the monetary reforms in the Baltic countries were not very much supported by the, by the Western financial institutions. IMF openly opposed it, declaring that uh, it's not, not good to leave the rubles so we must stay in the same So, And actually, I must again say that thanks to the many governments, including the Swedish one, uh, we had uh, resources and possibilities to do it. And this was very important for us. It's of course very hard for me to, to try to explain why it happened, this change in the relations with Russia. I have asked this once, a year ago from a famous politician, uh, I don't know, he's currently in the freedom because now I'm in the state in police and that's so off. Uh, and he, he answered that what happened from his position was that even as this starts, uh, after the, uh, after the Bush and uh, and all the events in Russia, Yeltsin, President Yeltsin, has a little bit been too optimistic and not succeeded to use this momentum of opportunity to really wipe away the KGB and other power structures. Because when they were not wiped away immediately, they restored their influence and their power step by step, but very systematically. And this understanding that Russia actually must demonstrate to the world that she is not weak and Russia can act as empire started to be stronger and stronger. And uh, in many ways I think that's, that's one of the explanations. 
Personally, I also tried to speak the other reason also, and this was a genuine shock. Talking with many Russian Democrats during these years, including the mayor of St. Petersburg, uh, Borisov Chak, um, I understood <coughs> long, long sittings and talks that actually they had never believed that the Baltic countries were really go. They supported our freedom fight as a Democrats, but they were sure that after this support we will come back to them and say, dear guys, now let's live together. And when they understood that we will really go and we can survive without all these economical ties and so on, they were shocked. At least I can say personally, Mr. Sobchak was shocked. And as I heard from many, many other Estonian politicians on their contacts with the higher Russian officials, that was the same feeling what uh, they had. You couldn't condemn it uh, because it was genuine. But this, uh, this just happened uh, in one moment. So it's very hard to say I'm right, I am wrong. What were mo other factors? But uh, probably all this together created this situation. Because we couldn't change our course. Our decision to go to the West was made. Our nations made it. And our task, the first democratic elected government, just had to deliver it. The return, of, the return to Europe was our highest goal in this time. And of course, this, to achieve this, you had to take several other steps. Starting from this, and most important, really to withdraw the Russian army from its military bases, because you couldn't be part of the European structures even technically, having the foreign army on your territory. So this was our main goal. <coughs> and uh, at the same time, looking to the world, I looked at my personal archive and collected some foreign newspapers and magazines from this time. Actually, nobody in the world believed it. Nobody believed that it can be possible, that the Baltic countries can really become the normal members of the Western society. 